to another session of Roland's Recap. I'll tell you right now, I look over to my right. I got to tell you first of all where I'm at, but look at this man over here. This man has identified what MMA is about. Combative sports to be really full rounded in my assessment, but let me tell you where we're at. We're over at Guy Metzger's Com Combat Sports Club. Let me give you the address. 14839 Inwood Road in Addison. And the only reason I give you that is, you know what, if you want to meet someone who can show you the ropes and what I call combative sports, this is a man. Guy, it's good to be here, Pleasure. and I want to thank you so much. I'm going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, before I get started again, I like a lot of these MMA fighters that I see right here. They're humble in words, but don't get around those hands. Don't get around those legs, baby, because you know what? They'll come alive real quick. Guy, let me first of all tell you, I'm here. I'm in home. I'm at home right now. You know I love the sport. We see sure. each other at boxing matches. Yeah. We see each other at MMA events. I know you have a love for the sport. I know you love everything about what we're talking about here. Let me first of all ask you, how you been? What have you been doing? Tell me what's up with Guy Metzger, the man, and the fighter. Uh, well, the fighter's retired. So <laughs> the, the only real fighting I do now is trying to get my children to school on time. But uh, as Guy Metzger, the person, um, most of you know, I, I uh, was president of H&M Fights. I recently stepped down from that position to pursue uh, some personal um, gotcha. uh, things. I am um, in the TV business still. We, I had the opportunity to uh, be an executive producer of a, uh, a new uh, animated series that will be coming out uh, next year. Gotcha. And, uh, so we're developing that. And it also gave me a little bit more time to work on, on my, my athletes. The problem with working with HGNet, it was a great, great opportunity, and, and I, I'm blessed that Mark and Andrew Simon had a lot of faith in me to, to do what I did. But it took a lot away from my personal life and also from sure. the, the training of my athletes, yeah. which is really uh, my passion. And um, so now I'm kind of back in doing that and, 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 and you know, uh, just. Well, you know what? You know, you, you said that's your passion, and I see it out here. We're in the middle of the day right now, ladies and gentlemen. We're on a Thursday, and I tell you what, we've got a gym full of fighters out here trying to make some noise, and this man leading the charge. Why don't we give the fight fans a quick wrap-up of what you did pro-wise? Pro? Yes. Well, I originally started in um, professional martial arts. I was a full-contact karate fighter for the, uh, there was a league called the Full-Contact Karate League, that started when I was 20. And I fought, uh, I had uh, 43, 44 fights. Wow. Before. And um, and then when that kind of fizzled out, because it was uh, the Japanese style full contact karate, which really didn't take off in America, um, I switched over to boxing and kickboxing. And uh, I boxed uh, and kickboxed. I had uh, was 11 and 0 professional boxer. Um, uh, I will say that I didn't fight too many tough guys. <laughs> <laughs> I had fought a few tomato cans. I had a few tough fights, but, um, but um, I... Um, I had 11 and I had, uh, had uh, eight knockouts, and um, as a professional kickboxer, um, I had a little bit more success. I was a world champion. And, uh, great, great. And I was uh, 22 and three with 19 knockouts. Great. And then um, basically, you know, it's tough to make. You know how it is in the business. It's tough. You don't have uh, the right management, the right stuff. You make money, so um, you know the opportunity came to fight in the Ultimate Fighting Championship came up, and um, I said, okay, you know what. 25 years old, I'm not really doing much for my career. You know, having these titles is right. one thing, yeah. making, you know, making rents another. And um, so I said, you know what, I'll fight in this thing. Just say I did it. Because originally, in format, you guys got to appreciate, there were no rules. There were no time limits, no weight classes. There was absolutely no rules. So I could bite <laughs> your face off and not get disqualified. And uh, I said, you know what the hell, I'll give it a shot and, and do it. And I figured, you know, I'd fight in it once and then just kind of retire. And so I fought in it. But... But I was 25, and uh, my nature as a competitor just was, it was, it was tough to say, okay, I'm going to give this up. And uh, so then they said, okay, well, won't you fight in it again? So I fought in it again and won. And then I got an offer to fight in a mixed martial arts league in Japan called Pancrase. And okay. I did that for five years, and basically, uh, and then I, I switched from there. I, I came back to the United States to fight in UFC where uh, I, I won the, the title. Uh, but that was back when you had to win by winning the tournaments. And uh, uh -huh. so I won. It was actually the second tournament they did where they put weight classes in. Gotcha. Heavyweight and lightweight. Lightweight is a little bit deceiving because lightweight was 199 pounds. And so I was actually <laughs> the lightweight champion um, at 199 pounds. And then I went back to Japan and um, basically finished up most of my career in Japan with the, with the Pride organization. And I had, had a lot of fights. 
Well, now the passion that you have is really a legacy. I'm going to tell you right now, right now, guy, it's a legacy because I see these young men wearing the name Guy Metzger. There's a lot behind that name. I mean, a lot of experience. You're humble in spirit, but I'm going to tell you. I'm not you that humble. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, to, on the film you are, on, on tape you are, but these men really, really represent you with a lot of pride, and I want to thank you for that. Tell me about the gym now. What type of future do you see amateur? What do you see pro? Are you, you got people in line right now? What does the future look like for your gym? Well, you know, that, that part is, um, is, is actually where I'm proud of. I've been in business for 23 years in okay. the house, and um, we have always been, you know, uh, almost from day one, uh, the mecca when it came to real, sure. real combat athletes. You're right. Um, and we, 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 we want to say it like that. We, we have all the real combat sports uh -huh. that the Olympics offers. We, we, we're heavy in amateur boxing. In fact, Audrey Drew, which you know, just won the world amateur title. Sure. Hopefully she'll be on the first Olympic team. Uh, so we have a pretty extensive amateur boxing uh, team. We have a, a judo team. Mm -hmm. And we have a wrestling team. So we, 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 we're represented in all the real combat. Like Taekwondo is not a real combat sport, so that doesn't matter. <laughs> Okay. And, uh, he can say that. I can't. Yeah, you can say it. Uh, <laughs> it's the truth. Um, truth may hurt, but the truth will set you free. Okay, you I say. got you. Uh, so we, we have that. So we're really big in that. We, we like pushing that. You know, I mean, I was a big fan of being an Olympian. I was one to be an Olympic wrestler. Uh, gotcha. Just never, never, never happened. Um, so I, I know the dream. Uh, so we, 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 we push uh, a lot of our athletes in that. Okay. And then... Um, and then we also have the professional. We, well, we train kickboxing, but as you know, Texas doesn't have a lot of right, professional right, kickboxing. Right. The United States really doesn't. So really what we do is we, we push the boxing and the mixed martial arts on the professional level. Now, and also in the amateur levels, which aren't Olympic-oriented sports, we uh, have uh, you know, the catch wrestling, you know, right, the right, right, wrestling, right. and jiu-jitsu. So we, we, we basically, and we also have sambo, so we, okay. which is, uh, those of you guys know sambo, sambo is Russian judo. It's a, it's a, a form wow. of, uh, of uh, it's a hybrid judo form that the Russians came up with, very, very, uh, very effective. And um, so, you know, we, we, we offer a lot you gotcha. know, because uh, I'm a firm believer in competition. I, you know, professionals. Look, look behind here. I mean, I see it already. Yeah. He wears it. He just doesn't talk it. He wears it. There it is. Yeah, the, the, and a beautiful wife too. Yeah, that's the best competition. <laughs> that, that, that's the best competition. Hey, that's the best catch I think he's had. The competition he had, but it's the best title I won there is Daddy. But. Uh, but you know what we do is we, we try we you know we try to make it uh, uh, an accessible place. We intentionally keep our prices lower than a lot of places okay. because uh, you know we want uh, we want all, all walks of life sure. to come in here because uh, you know gyms, uh, martial arts gyms or, 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 or sporting gyms like real gyms, especially the the combat sports, was one of the very few places back in like uh, in countries like in South Africa where they had apartheid. Where in the gym there wasn't apartheid, you know in the south. When you had uh, you know tremendous racist racial issues, you know, right, right. Okay. You know black and yeah, Mexican sure, and all sure, that, sure. and white, in the gym you don't you don't you don't have those those things because a man's a man because he stands yeah. up on his own two feet and and, and, and he proves himself uh, sure. in, in in the best way possible. Even if he gets beat, but he stands up on his feet, he's respected. And that's kind of like we have here. You know, I tell people everyone walks in. I tell the children that we train. I say sure. the only thing you sure. get for free. Here is love. Everything else you have to earn, okay. and uh, that's been our attitude with uh, with our training, and it's developed uh, some pretty amazing um, people. Well, let me tell you, your gym is strategically uh, uh, located on Inwood between Spring Valley and Beltline. Yeah. And he's right there, right off the toll road. Even I could find his, his place. A little hidden, it, but once you get on Inwood, you'll see him again. The address is fourteen eight three nine. Let me ask you, any other contact information, a website, yeah, a guy, phone number? Yeah, GuyMezger.com, which is G-U-Y-M-E-Z-G-E-R.com. That, that'll do to our website. And, of course, our telephone number is 214-954-0022. And, like I said, we, we invite people to come down here. And the only thing we ask people to do is come down with the right attitude. We're on the train, you, you know, because it's, it's, you know, even our, like, our, our non-combat oriented training, like our, our, like our level one program, is where a lot of people stay. They're, they're not interested in being, at, you know, combat athletes, but they want to train. Sure. Um, it's still very tough, demanding. You know, if it is not tough, then it's not a combat sport. And I'll tell you something. Now, combat sports, and I think why we're having such a, a revival in them, is that I think in America today we want to grasp on things that are real, 
and that are relatively inexpensive too. Playing football, playing hockey, playing things like that are very expensive sports. You know, you can get into a wrestling program for seventy-five bucks. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, yeah. We can get into uh, these uh, boxing programs uh, that that are funded by the, the rec center stuff for like twenty bucks. There you go. You know, and I think what it is, people want to get real. Gotcha. And, gotcha. and combat sports gotcha. are the you know what? Combat sports are the only sports you don't play. Everything else is a game, and you play it. <laughs> but combat sports, you don't play. And I think people are done playing. And I think that, that, that it's time to get real, and uh, I think that's what we, you know, we, we want to be uh, the catalyst for that growth. Well, I know you're on the move right now. You're about to catch a plane yeah. here. What I want to do is give you one last opportunity, maybe give a little shout-out to the loves of your life. Oh, well, uh, you know, I'll be honest. Uh, I'm not a very humble man, as most people will know. I, I basically kind of tell it like it is. I always love people who go, are you, you any good? I go, yeah, idiot, I'm a five-time world champion. I didn't get there because I suck. <laughs> people would take that as kind of being humble, but I will tell you what is humbling. Humbling is I've got a wonderful wife and, and three beautiful children. And if you ever want to get real in your life, you know, um, outside of being real in combat sports, have kids. <laughs> you know what? It's been a great, great session. Thanks anything so else, guy, before you leave us? Anything uh, else? No, I, uh, you know, I, I would like to shout out. There's a Once Was Champion. There's a documentary about Evan Tanner, who's a, who's a Texas brother of ours, who uh, uh, passed away uh, okay. guess, almost two years ago. He was in an accident, and uh, he was a, uh, an interesting character with a lot of great demons. But if you get the opportunity to see this uh, this uh, documentary, I think one more time. It's called uh, I Was Once Was a Champion, and it's about Evan Tanner. And I, wow. I, I would recommend a lot of people go. He, okay. he was a neat, neat guy. I knew him personally back in, the, gotcha. back in the, his beginning days of uh, MMA with the Pancreas organization stuff. So. Wow. He's a great guy. Well, I'll tell you what, we're not going to keep you from your air flight. I'm going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this right here is just the beginning of some interviews that we're also going to have here. Metro PCS, Tap Out, coming to town. They picked this gym. But on behalf of www. North Texas Fisticuffs, and the voice of North Texas Combative Sports, Roland Gomez, and a quick shout out again to Sean Malone, the man behind the camera. Until our next recap.